Welcome to the show, I am Avid Expert, I'll be your host today- Wait, 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 welcome to the show? I'm your host? Who the fuck do I think I- Okay guys, today we're gonna be talking about developers. Now I know a lot of developers, writers, and the lead producers and things get a lot of credit for the game projects that we have enjoyed and loved throughout the years, but I wanna talk about the nuances and other things behind game development, as well as the fact that a lot of this stuff isn't appreciated by us as fans, and I just really wanna get into that anyway and talk about that, because to me, if I was designing a game and I had put a lot of effort into certain scenes, into certain nuances, and that had been heavily contributing to the feeling and reception of the game, but nobody really appreciated it. I'd be a little bit sad, and I think, wouldn't you guys too? So let's get into the video and discuss all of this anyway. So without actually using a game as a basis for our example, we're being a little bit vague here. This is one of those points anybody could make, like, oh, games aren't appreciated enough, and that's just vague and doesn't go into anything. So I want to use two specific games as my example. And the reason I'm going to be using these two specific games is they're on opposite ends of the spectrum. Now, Resident Evil 1 and its remake were very well received and praised by the fans, and so that's going to be my first example. And example number two is actually going to be Battlefront 2. Many of you may be wondering why I'm using this controversial project as my example. And it is kind of contrast to the title of the video, is it not? Why we should appreciate developers more, but then the actual content of the video includes Battlefront 2. Have I been paid by the company? Well, actually, I have to say I have as well as President Trump and all the world leaders actually paid me to make this video and endorse Battlefront 2, Disney themselves, everybody. Regardless of that, you should take my word at face value because this isn't a biased video. Now look at the Battlefront 2 project and then compare it to the original Battlefront. You can tell a lot of lore authenticity, attention to detail, model and texture design, people who were truly fans of the game put their hearts and souls into the development of it. Years worth of effort and collaboration between many, many individuals working tirelessly and over time to deliver the best product available. Now if we ignore everything about the actual microtransactions. Is Battlefront 2 looking to be a good game? And I think many people will actually agree that yes, it does. The graphics are beautiful. The environments and aesthetics are absolutely stunning. I'm talking about the lore authenticity. The sound design has been paid full attention to. Even the little quotes like Roger Roger from the droids is just like Star Wars. The game is amazingly optimized, even running at high graphic settings on medium tier PCs. Does that mean that we shouldn't be in arms over the issues such as microtransactions? No, that's not what the point of this video is about. We should definitely be up in arms about that. And I am totally against loot box mentality, gambling, and all that crap. But, don't you think it's a little bit sad that the people who invested years worth of their time, who have put incredible amounts of work into the texturing, the models, the mechanics, the optimization, the graphics, into absolutely everything. What about the people who are clearly Star Wars fans, making sure that all the references and dialogue are actually correct for all the entities? Because if you look at, say, Alien Colonial Marines, some developers can be really lazy when it comes to this aspect. All of these things are phenomenal, so don't you think it's sad that the decisions of a few in this corporation to implement microtransactions into the game actually destroys the reputation of the whole company and the appreciation for all of the game overall. Why is it that as gamers we can't separate the corporation and company into specific individuals? Why do we see it like that ant colony? Why do we put the blame on all of them when it clearly isn't? The developers who work on texturing and modeling get no say in these things, but do you not think they see these videos? Do you not think they go onto the Reddit pages? Do you not think they join Facebook groups and things? Well, I have personal experience in meeting developers in these areas and talking to them, and for a large part they like to remain anonymous, of course not showing that they are actually affiliated with the team, but don't you think it saddens them? Don't you think they also agree with you that microtransactions are a bad thing? This is not their job description forte or in their decision making or power. They can't alter these decisions. And if you were an artist for that company, don't you think it would be like you've been stabbed twice? 
First by the people who are leading the project that you've put so many years into, but also by the fans that can't even appreciate the level of work that you've put into it, and then you're put into a really awkward position where you can't even discuss things properly, and then it makes sense why they're using anonymous accounts. I just think that's sad guys, and that's one example that I wanted to talk about, and that's why I used Battlefront 2 as one of them, and I think you can now see things in a little bit of a different light maybe, and that developers are different people, that companies and ant colonies, and not everybody in the corporation agrees with each other, and of course some of you may already know that and see that as common sense, but considering that boycotts, witch hunts and all these other things are massive, and as you can see if you go into any of the groups dedicated to Battlefront to. The hate trains are massive. There is none of this diversity of opinion about what I'm talking about. There's nobody to back the individuals in the company that might even agree with you and nobody's extending any hand either or even trying to give them a little bit of support. That was my first point anyway, how we should maybe change our opinions, offer a little bit of diversity, and maybe extend a hand to the people in the corporation that may agree with us. But my second point's gonna be a little bit different because I'm talking about Resident Evil 1, which was received extremely well. So what exactly am I talking about when we didn't appreciate the developers enough? Well, let's get into that topic now. When you get into any discussion with an old RE fan about what they loved and what made RE1 such a great game, you'll get a diversity of topics and opinions of course, but there are some overarching ones that just seem to hit in every single conversation. Now if you weren't around during RE1's time, you might not be able to relate to this too much, but it will give you some insight to the topic, and if you are from the Resident Evil 1 days, I'm sure you'll agree that these points come up in every single conversation with a fellow RE1 fan. I just want to say by the way, these points are in no particular order, there's no importance or anything like that behind them, they're just randomly stated. So without any further delay, let's get right into them because we need to talk about this to understand what we're not appreciating. So the first point I'm gonna talk about is the cringy humor, as well as the bad voice acting. Now that's been very, very central to the old Resident Evils. It's still around, it's just been modernized in Resident Evil 5, 6, and 7, but in many of the older Resident Evils, and because number one is our example today, it was like an old 80s cheese detective horror C-grade movie. Like, it was absolutely horrendous. I don't think Capcom was actually trying to do proper humor, and many of the fans agree this is part of the major charm that drew us into Resident Evil 1 itself. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Barry, thanks for saving my life and it helped bring moments of comic relief that really helped alleviate the tension in an otherwise very serious game. The second point I'd like to make is the survival action horror. Now many people say that Resident Evil has been gunned up since the old days, but to be honest, you can't run around in Resident Evil 7 with infinite ammo on an RPG. The action and survival horror aspect has always been central to Resident Evil. It's nothing new actually. It just used to be it just used to be different is all. Having to manage your resources and other things, the game design and mechanics, should I say, were very exceptionally well crafted and gave birth to a whole new genre that has created decades worth of games with the same game design as the basis. Another point to make is the bosses. The bosses have always been a part of Resident Evil, just like Dark Souls. Having no bosses in Resident Evil actually would be like having no bosses in Dark Souls. It would be a very boring game, and it's a major piece of the charm behind it, just like the cringy humor. Having to defeat some over the top boss here and there is absolutely lovely. The sounds and OST. Again, this is a Resident Evil 1 video, but I kinda wanna break it a little bit and say that all of the older Resident Evil titles had absolutely amazing original soundtracks, as well as atmospheric noises, gun noises, and other things for the time. These really drew you in and immersed yourself into the games, and actually to be honest, I'd say the use of piano which was heavy in the older games is probably why I love classical piano today to the extent I do. They used a lot of old classical pieces from Mozart and other composers, and even did some original soundtracks as well. The diversity of not just ambient noise but also musical soundtracks really helps enhance the atmosphere of Resident Evil, and I just can't exaggerate enough how important that actually was. 
the mystery of Resident Evil 1 was also a big part of the charm and finding out and revealing all of the twists. So of course at first we were innocent and just thought we were going to a mansion and then we unfold that it's actually an umbrella facility and that Wesker's not actually on our side. Barry's being manipulated, there was a whole assortment of drama going on in Resident Evil 1 and it was a big part of the charm and the story and the writing. Mix it with the bad voice acting and the cheesy humour and it made for a great package. Now I'm not trying to make a comprehensive review of Resident Evil 1 and that's why I've skimped out on these points a little bit and I'm going to miss a few of them out. I would be a bit late to the party if I'm trying to make a Resident Evil 1 review. I'm pretty much two decades late to that one actually so yeah we we're kind of screwed. But remember guys, these are the major points that most people talk about. And there are a few more, but these are the major ones. But what are we not appreciating then? What are we missing that made the game so important to us? What actually enhanced it so much and what immersed us in that a lot of people put effort into enough that we should appreciate it? Well, let's take an example. What about boss fights? That's something that's central to Resident Evil as we already talked about and also a lot of other games as well so I'm sure many people can relate to it. What are the first things that jump to your mind when I say talk about the Nemesis fight? What do you think of? Is it about the enemy design? Is it about how hard it was? How many bullets you had to put into it? The music that was going on in the background? The intensity of the situation and the emotions you were feeling? Those are generally the points that people consider, am I right? And those are fair points to make, they are, but those are generally around design and mechanics and those are just two subtle things that make the whole picture up. Have you ever considered about the level design in actual boss fights, about how they were designed to actually make you progress through them and the developers put themselves in the shoes of you as a player in so many aspects. The subtle things such as not only where you navigate but the lighting in specific areas to lead you along. Like for example, when you see a light at the end of a corridor or a brick that's a different colour than the rest of the bricks, you see subtle little things like this, but do you truly appreciate the game design behind that and the quality of life that it actually provides? Let me give you an example. If we are in a game and you've got a C4 pack on you and there is a wall, now part of this wall is a little bit lighter in shade than the rest of the wall. Where do you place your C4? Do you actually understand that the developers have gone to great deals to psychologically condition you over decades into subconsciously seeing these game elements so that you understand how to progress? To me personally, a lot more goes into game development and design than people truly appreciate. And just like any other part of game development, such as the texturing, modeling, enemy design, Massive amounts of effort, passion, changing things, reiterations were put into the actual aspects that I'm talking about here. Very subtle nuances that people can't truly appreciate. Think about Dead Space if any of you have played it for example. How many of you would get the same atmosphere and feeling from the story if all of the lighting was reversed so that everything was bright in the game? I think many of us can agree that that would have actually ruined the experience overall and changed it 100%. So why is it that we can't appreciate the people or even the nuances behind these design choices? This video was designed just to make you think a little bit guys, that's why I gave these two contrasting examples from Resident Evil 1 which is a very successful game to Battlefront 2 which is turning out to be a huge controversy. I just wanted you to think about appreciating the developers a little bit more, I'm not talking about the staff or the people that you usually appreciate but more the people who aren't behind the choices that are controversial, the people who design the things that really make the atmosphere and the navigation around the maps that extra little bit special for you guys. The people who design the puzzles and think about how you as a player are going to consider going through them and completing them. They need to make it complex and challenging but also to the point where people can progress. And of course in games where this is the specific niche, for example Portal 2, these concepts are appreciated but it's when you get into another genre or game overall you forget to appreciate these points and I just wanted you to think about that. Anyway, I just hope you're having a beautiful day as always guys. Take it easy and peace.